Hi there. My name's Eli. I'm a community manager for TechSoup, and I've also been a volunteer helping co-lead this particular chapter of Meetups. This is all under the umbrella of TechSoup, which is a nonprofit that helps other nonprofits get, implement, and use technology effectively. Today's guests are here to talk a little bit about volunteer programs. So our guest experts are going to teach you unique ways to leverage corporate volunteers. They're going to explore innovative strategies that harness the enthusiasm and energy of corporate volunteers to drive your nonprofit success. So we've got Eric Franzo, who goes by he, him, and is the founder of Clipper Slate. He was previously a board member of the Burnaby Morse Sports and has volunteered with dozens of nonprofits across Canada and the U.S., and with him is Cree Henderson, who goes by she, her, who is a strategic partnerships manager at Purposely. With previous experience working for a nonprofit in volunteer recruitment and volunteering with nonprofits in her spare time. We've also got Nasira here with us, who we're going to learn more about very soon. But with that, let me get out of your way and pass you over to our guest experts for the day, who are going to talk more about bringing volunteers it from corporate settings into your organization. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Eli, for the wonderful introduction. And thank you everyone so much for taking the time out of your busy schedules to attend this webinar on utilizing corporate volunteers to support your nonprofit's unique needs. So Eli said, my name is Cree. I'm the Strategic Partnerships Manager at Persley. And at Purposely, part of our job is to build relationships and connect nonprofits with corporate volunteers. We've learned a lot about how to work with corporate volunteers over the years, and we're really excited to share what we've learned with you so you can hopefully benefit as well. Personally, I've volunteered with various nonprofits over the years and also have experience working for a nonprofit in community and donor relations, and I'm happy to be here today with you all. I'm also joined by Eric Franzo, who is the founder of Purposely. And we're also joined by Nasira, who is a dedicated career and mentorship advisor at the YWCA's Tech Connect program. Okay, so here is a brief overview of what we'll cover today. So we'll start by taking a closer look into why nonprofits engage corporate volunteers, why companies want to volunteer, and how these volunteers can be utilized. This will be followed by a short brainstorming activity that we have planned. We'll explain more on that later. And then we'll have a real example from a nonprofit in Calgary who used a corporate group. And then we'll hear from Nasira and she'll spend some time outlining the Tech Connect program and how they've incorporated groups to support their programming. And at the end, we'll have some time for a Q&A period. So let's start by exploring why it's valuable to engage corporate volunteers. And while there are many reasons, here are some that we hear a lot. So the first is they are motivated to volunteer. Some corporate volunteers haven't met their coworkers in person before, so this will be a completely new experience. For many companies, this is attributed to COVID-19, where they moved partially or completely online. So some corporate volunteers also maybe haven't volunteered in a while, which can be for a variety of reasons. Maybe there wasn't a need to fulfill certain requirements for maybe school or something like that anymore, or they just got busier with their careers for whatever reason. Having the opportunity to volunteer um, with their company on company time is a great chance to support their communities, and therefore they are motivated to get to work. We often hear from nonprofits just how quickly groups get tasks done. Moving along, they're available flexible hours. Having said this, we recognize that there are two major demographics for volunteering, that being students and retirees. Corporate groups can supplement times when it may be hard to find volunteers to work on projects during the day, maybe the daytime when staff is in office. And corporate groups are available typically at other times of day when maybe your regular volunteers might not be as available. So corporate volunteers typically volunteer during business hours, Monday to Friday. Okay, next up, fresh perspectives, skill sets, and ideas. Engaging this demographic can lead to fresh perspectives that you might be looking for. Corporate volunteers often bring a diverse range of skills and expertise from their professional backgrounds and life experience. 
They can offer specialized knowledge in areas such as marketing, finance, technology, or management, which can be valuable for you if you're looking to improve certain operations, achieve goals more effectively or efficiently. For example, Access Pro Bono here in Vancouver will be using a corporate group from a tech company to seek consultation on incorporating an AI chatbot into their intake processes. So this will just make it a lot smoother for anyone onboarding with them. All right. So next up, it's cost-effective support. Utilizing corporate volunteers can be a cost-effective way for you to access additional support and resources without incurring extra costs. But instead of hiring consultants or contractors, you can leverage the skill and time of corporate volunteers to address specific needs and challenges. But we'll touch more on this later with a case study example. And next up here, it's an avenue for fundraising and partnerships. So collaborating with corporate volunteers can facilitate networking opportunities and foster partnerships between you and the company. This can lead to valuable connections, resources, and support from the corporate group, including potential returning volunteers, sponsors, and donations. And lastly here, increased capacity. So by mobilizing corporate volunteers, you can expand your capacity to carry out projects and initiatives. Volunteers can provide additional power to support day-to-day -day activities, social events, or long-term programs, which then enables you to accomplish more with limited resources. We know how busy you are day-to-day, -day, and utilizing your group can free up some time to focus on other important tasks that I'm sure you have on the go. Okay, so next up is, what is the financial benefit of corporate volunteering? According to research done by Volunteer Hub, Volunteers are 66% more likely to donate to the organization they support. The more groups you might host, the more likely they may be repeat volunteers and then are more likely to donate. Currently, the dollar value of volunteering is placed at $32 per hour. The corporate volunteers we have worked with have contributed over $65,000 in time over the last two years. So to provide some insight into the reasons why companies and employees want to volunteer, it can come down to a few different reasons or an amalgamation of a few. So for starters, companies want to build their company culture. And this company culture is meant to capture the norms, values, and behaviors of the business. This is something that should be ingrained into the company. So for example, this could be things like communication on Slack, or whatever mode of communication they use, flexible scheduling policies like a four-day work week or volunteer initiatives. Of course, building company culture takes time. However, some companies were highly impacted by COVID-19. Working remotely shifted how team members interact, their daily routines, working routines, get-togethers, social parties for staff, social interactions at work just completely changed. Because of this, volunteer initiatives have become an important element for companies to establish their values and to promote a positive work culture. So this means that there are a growing number of companies looking for volunteer opportunities with you. And this brings us to our next point of retaining volunteers. So after COVID, of course, there was undoubtedly a large perspective shift and there was a great resignation. So this is where employees increasingly want to work for an employer that shares similar values and respects a work-life balance. Employees are asking more from their companies and volunteering is one way companies are working towards this. So volunteering has been shown as a way to retain employees. So research shows that volunteers or employees who volunteer are 1.5 times more likely to stay in their jobs for the next two years. Their 87% re report greater pride in their company. And of these employees, two they are two times more likely to report higher fulfillment with their company and career progression. Because of this, companies want to demonstrate their value by working with nonprofits and causes they care about and support. For example, we work with a company called Clio. They provide legal software to law firms and other organizations. So because they are super interested in the legal realm, they want to support causes and donate to causes like access to justice and education, mental health care for lawyers, 
and support for women in STEM. For employees, there are other reasons to volunteer, and these can be not as grand as the other ones, but of course, the opportunity to meet coworkers in person, spend time helping their community, support causes they care about, and also having the paid time to volunteer during work hours allows for flexibility and greater opportunity to volunteer with fewer barriers. Moving along here, hopefully this will spark some ideas within your organizations. A task may not initially seem like something you could use volunteers for, but if you have a task or project that needs done, it likely could be done with the help of a corporate group. In our experience, they're just happy to help out in any way. All of these examples listed there are real tasks corporate groups have accomplished for nonprofits with our coordination. Things like gardening, this could be like sprucing up your outside area, organizing back storage rooms, event prep, set up and tear down. Even odd jobs like fixing a shed and painting can all be accomplished easily with a corporate group. Okay, now we're going to do a very short exercise if you feel comfortable participating. So if you click on the link in the group chat there, it will allow you to type a short response on how you think you could involve a corporate group to help with your nonprofit's needs. We'll just take a minute or two here and you'll see everyone's answers populate a word cloud. And then after this presentation, we'll send a copy of what everyone came up with via email. And no matter how big or small the task is, feel free to get super creative. I see move offices, spring cleaning, raking leaves. Those are all really great tasks that a group can help with. Guarded work. Hopefully everyone's able to access the link. It looks like you are. Social media plan, building chicken coops. Yeah, event set up. Yeah, we've had a few of that. Especially as we're getting into spring, you might need some help doing some outside yard work. Yeah, office cleaning, that's great. We've had groups help out just by windexing windows. It might seem something that's like super small or maybe you'd think, oh, a group wouldn't want to help with that, but chances are they will. <laughs> and they'll be super quick about it. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, these are all really awesome, awesome suggestions. Great. There's no more suggestions. I will go on. Oh, there's maybe a few more. Make posters and signs. Yeah, for sure. We've also had groups set up gift bags for an annual fundraiser for a nonprofit here in Vancouver called Mission Possible. So they just got together, put the gift bags together, did some event set up, things like that. Just makes it so much easier when you have like yeah, in a smaller group of five people come in, they can just get it done so quickly. Great. Wow, photo archives. Oh, that's cool. Make food. Yep, of course. Those are all really great suggestions. Thanks so much for your participation. So now I'll pass it on to Eric. And we'll also make sure to send this to you after the presentation. But I'll pass it to Eric now and we'll take it from here. Awesome. Okay, thanks so much, Gray. And great suggestions in there. That was really awesome to see all those come in. Yeah, I'll talk through a case study, a couple other things here, and then we'll pass off to Nasira. But to start off, so our company purposely, and we'll chat about that a little bit briefly later. So we worked with a nonprofit called Families Matter, and they wanted us to share their story of corporate volunteering. So they're a Calgary-based nonprofit whose mission is to strengthen families by creating learning opportunities that build confidence, competence, and connections through life's transitions. They offer many programs for free, and because of their success, their team has grown significantly over the past few years. So this has led to a need for more space for both their staff and for all the families they service through their programming. Um, in terms of volunteering, Families Matter has regular volunteers that they rely on, so they have their steady stream of volunteers. But there are certain tasks around their center that typically would be completed by staff or might be taken care of by, say, like a hired professional or somebody like that. Um, one task in particular that they needed help with was painting. Uh, because of their growth over the pandemic, they needed their new office and classroom space painted with a fresh coat so that they could use it for staff meetings um, and some of their family programs that they put on. They actually never worked with a corporate group before. So the cool thing was they ended up leveraging a group of 10 
from a company called Procurify. So they're headquarters in Vancouver. They have an office over in Calgary. And what that team did was they painted two accent walls in their office. So I know somebody mentioned painting in there, the wall of the classroom, and also an adjoining hallway. And so this all took place in just a few hours and would have taken their staff significantly more time, something that Cree talked to, talked about earlier. They actually had clients compliment them on how bright and open the space felt when entering, which was a great outcome and was exactly what they were hoping for. They also let us know that it's common for this kind of operational task to be completed by a few individual staff or for them as a last resort, a hired professional. And they said the painting was completed more quickly than if they had done it themselves, and it ultimately saved them resources and time, which was great. And I know Kaylee put on here, if you haven't utilized volunteers in this way before, it's hard to imagine. So I love that brainstorming session, and thank you for all putting in those answers. Just to give us some ideas on what are the ways you can leverage a group of corporate volunteers. Go ahead, Cree. Yeah. So this other part is one piece that can often be overlooked is how do you keep these corporate volunteers engaged? after they just worked with you and were involved in an event. So one idea is to just keep connected, stay connected. I want to maintain regular communication with volunteers, and that could be through newsletters with updates on projects about your nonprofit, or to learn more about their corporate giving programs and matching gift opportunities. This allows you to leverage a company's philanthropy and amplify your impact. Companies often have budgets set aside for things like this, so tapping into that and leveraging that, especially after a group volunteered with you, is a great way to, to continue to build that relationship with the company. One thing, too, is since they just volunteered with you, we can also keep them informed about the impact of their work. As an example, with Families Matter, they brought in that group, they painted the room, and they could just send them a quick follow-up and say, we brought in a group for our family programming. They loved it. Here's what they had to say. It really brings people into that mission, makes their work really valuable, and makes them more likely to want to volunteer with again in the future and potential fundraising and things like that down the line. Another piece to this is provide opportunities for continued involvement. Uh, so these new opportunities, you could offer opportunities for volunteers to stay engaged, such as participating in maybe follow-up projects, uh, joining committees or advisory boards, and then maybe joining in most to like do volunteer appreciation days and things like that. So inviting them there uh, and having them join in with that community. One thing that companies can also offer Post-volunteering are their services. So this is a really neat one to be able to leverage. Organizations like TechSoup, who's hosting this, already provide a list of tools and services that you can leverage, often for free. But there are a lot of companies that may not have a formal nonprofit discount program, but they are willing to let you use their software for free. We mentioned a company called Clio before that we work with. So they're a legal software company here in Vancouver, and they're a good example. It's not publicly advertised but they will provide their software to, for free to community legal clinics and they help them get everything set up. The company that volunteers for you, if they happen to make a tool that could be useful for you, might be willing to do the same. So it's worth asking and seeing about building that relationship. Cool. And as mentioned before, just a quick bit about what we do here purposely to help bring companies and nonprofits together. Our goal, so we match employees with nonprofits and empower nonprofits by co-creating projects together we manage corporate volunteers. And as a result of that, we help you tackle impactful initiatives, just like the ones you mentioned in the Word Cloud. We're entirely free for nonprofits. There's no charge. And our goal is to make it sure that you get a corporate group to do something genuinely impactful for you. We really want to emphasize that impact, that it's something useful for your nonprofit. To use the previous example with Families Matter, we worked with them to initially brainstorm what projects they needed to get done. This involved helping them to evaluate and discuss where they could leverage the extra help. As you've already seen, they landed on needing volunteers for painting. And this was their kind of most time-saving and most cost-effective task that they wanted a group to help complete. After we figure out what task needs to get done, we work to ensure that all the volunteers have the information they need to show up on that day as prepared as they can be. So we take on all that work, we inform the volunteers, we let them know what's going to happen that day, so they're prepared. We basically want to handle that. You don't have to handle all that legwork. And... As we figure out what task needs to get done, we'll coordinate with them. We give them all the reminder emails. So we just try to make that process as smooth as possible. And then they show up on the day, help you out. And then you can continue the conversation with them and keep building that relationship. So enough about us. What I'd like to do now is introduce Nasira from the YWCA to share her experience. And I'd like to just intro, give a little background on Nasira quick. Nasira is deeply committed to empowering immigrant women to pursue their careers in traditionally male-dominated field of technology. She started her career journey as a volunteer by joining the board of the Society for Canadian Women in Science and Technology. Over the years, her volunteering profile has grown quite significantly, reflecting her dedication to supporting marginalized communities. Currently, 
She serves as a board director for Tech to Step, which is another nonprofit organization focused on advancing opportunities for women in the tech sector. Uh, through her various roles in nonprofit organizations, she exemplifies the power of giving back and making a difference in the lives of others. Her commitment to empowering immigrant women and promoting diversity in the tech industry is a testament to her passion for creating positive change in her community. So I'll pass it over to Sid Nasira now, who we've worked with previously, and I'll let her take it from here. Thank you for introducing me. And as uh, he told, I am a career and mentorship advisor with Tech Connect. And Tech Connect is one of the employment programs at YWCA. And you can look at the brief overview of YWCA. We have several employment programs that are you know, working with newcomers, with immigrants, and even with the Canadian citizens. And this Tech Connect program, it is a free employment program that supports newcomer self-identified women with experience in IT to secure rewarding careers in the tech industry. And Tech Connect provides support uh, through employment workshops and mentorship to secure a job in IT. So we work with job seekers. And let's see what is the need of these job seekers. So if you go to the next slide. So mm, you know that in today's competitive job market, it is crucial for job seekers to have the right tools and right support to succeed. And this slide, it outlines the fundamental needs of job seekers and the various forms of the support that is available to them and how corporate volunteers can contribute. As you see, job seekers to, uh, need to have a polished resume, a well-written cover letter, and ample practice for interviews. These are the basic essentials for any successful job application. And this support for job seekers, it is provided through several employment programs, just like Tech Connect. And these programs are mostly run by nonprofit organizations. And these programs offer structured assistance regarding resume writing, crafting cover letter, and interview practices. In addition, there are so many online templates and tools to streamline this process. And recently, advancement in AI, it has also enhanced this process. But beyond these basics, uh, job seekers also need additional support, such as insider knowledge of industry trends and networking opportunities so they can expand their professional connections. And they also need personalized guidance, encouragement, motivation, and accountability. So these are all crucial for staying focused and resilient throughout the job search journey. Because you know, the job, uh, job search journey is a uh, like, tough, tough journey. And as um, one of the most valuable sources for this support for job seekers, this is mentors. So mentors from corporate world who have established their careers in the Canadian tech industry. Mentors provide guidance, advice, and support based on their own experiences, helping job seekers navigate the complexities of the job market to achieve their goals. So before going over how mentorship works at Tech Connect, let me share uh, with you what does mentorship means for us at Tech Connect. So in the next slide, so this is the definition of mentorship for us. So the purpose of mentoring is always to help the mentee to change something, to improve their performance, to develop their leadership qualities, to develop their partnership skills, to realize their vision, or many other things. So this movement from where they are to where they want to be, that is called mentoring for us. So we also say that mentoring is a supportive learning relationship between a caring individual who shares knowledge, experience, and wisdom with an other individual who is ready and willing to benefit from this exchange to enrich their professional journey. Ready and willingness. 
willing to benefit. It, these are like two very important aspects and to make sure that the mentees are ready to receive the support, we have a process at Tech Connect. In the next slide, so this is the, in the next slide, so this is the overview of our mentorship process. So our participants who are potential mentees, so they initially take part in Tech Connect workshops and they complete a mentorship checklist. So this checklist, it contains preparing a good resume, writing a good cover letter, and doing some assessments to get awareness about their skills, strengths, and values. And when they come up with all these lists, then they come up with career goals or some smart goals. And then they come with some, their need, where they need support from mentors. So then mentorship coordinator, they match these mentees with mentors based on what they need and also based on what mentors offer. And initially we set up them for an informational interview for half an hour. After this half an hour initial meeting, if both parties, mentors and mentees, if they are agree to proceed, when we set up them for additional two months of mentorship support. So they work on their own, like how many times they want to meet. But the rough idea is that mentees they take about three hours of mentor time to get the guidance and support from them. This mentorship program is running for about over five years and it is highly valued by our clients. So in the next slides, there are a few testimonials how our mentees, they get supported. So one of the mentees says, my mentors provided me with valuable insights, support and knowledge about the Canadian job market. I now feel more confident and know where to go for guidance. And another mentee says, the mentorship was quite useful and informative for me. Mentor gave me lots of tips and ideas to improve my workplace communication skills. She also gave me insights on how to handle the review meetings with the manager at the workplace and many more. So in these testimonials, you might have noticed that mentorship is not just to support in finding the employment, but it is also helping them how to excel at workplace how to learn the communication skills for the workplace. So with that, in the next slides, so you would see this beautiful picture. So this photo is taken from last year when we had an amazing event with Purposely and Tech Network. And with the help of uh, Eric and Cree, we were able to set up this event and titled as Speed Mentoring. And in this speed entering event, we matched our alumna, no, not we matched, uh, actually Eric and Kri, they matched our alumna with, uh, with the mentors, the corporate went mentors. And during this event, uh, each uh, mentee is provided with two to three mentors to have their resumes reviewed. And also they were engaged into mock interviews. And in addition, during breaks, they networked with all those diverse group of uh, volunteer mentors and built their network. And this event was a huge success. And we are, of course, looking forward to having such great events more often tap with Purposely and TAP Network. And this is how Tech Connect has engaged many professionals from tech industry to volunteer their time to support our clients. And currently, the application to recruit more mentors is open. And you can, you can check out this link to apply for a mentor. And currently we are, although we are looking to find mentors in like wide variety of IT professionals, but mostly we are in need of looking 
need of the mentors in the areas of web development, front end, full stack, software development, UX and UI, graphic designing, business analysis, project management, data analysis and data science, and also digital marketing. So these are the areas that if anyone is interested in mentoring in these areas, they have the background from these areas. So uh, please feel free to apply uh, for a mentor. And yeah, if you want, if you have any questions or you want to connect with me, so you can find my uh, LinkedIn uh, in the chat and I will be happy to connect with you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nasira. That was really great. So we do have some time now for questions. If anyone has any, I know we've had it going on in the chat here as well. But if anyone has questions, feel free to post them in the chat there. We'd be happy to answer them. Or, or later on, feel free to add me on LinkedIn or Eric on LinkedIn. If you have questions, book a meeting with me and we can chat further. Sure. Why don't I kick it off for the first question while others are getting loose and limber? My question is, what are your recommendations around bringing that kind of brainstorming process we did today into my own organization so we can start getting a sense of what are some of the kinds of tasks or projects that might be appropriate and valuable to our organization? I can jump in on this one. One of the things we do with each nonprofit that we, we talk with, and over the years, it's and hundreds of nonprofits around the world at this point. And each time, I'd say for 90% of nonprofits can leverage a group of some kind. There is 10% where it's just a group or they just don't really need volunteers, and that's totally understandable. Of the ones that do, we try to figure out particularly their projects that have been on the back burner for a bit. I know Cree mentioned that students and retirees end up making the bulk of volunteers for some organizations. And so those people who work volunteer less than half as much as those two other groups. And so one of the things we do is just try to engage in that brainstorming where it's like maybe you've had a project sitting there for six months and you haven't had time to get to it. There are people who during working hours will come and help out. So what could that look like? Are there projects outside? Is there landscaping or gardening or anything that needs to be maybe beautification projects? So we really just encourage kind of an open conversation that there have been things. And every time there's that light bulb moment where they're like, oh yeah, there was a storage room that we've had just sitting there. Things are unlabeled. It's getting messy. It's one nonprofit, which is like, it's almost a work safe violation at this point because it's, things are stacked. If we go in there, who knows what might happen? Corporate group went in, took the boxes down, labeled everything accordingly, made it look nice. And then the room was ready to go. Things much more organized. So it's a lot of things like that where you may not just be thinking about it, but to really just sit down, brainstorm, just and let anybody let out those ideas where, you know, again, it's things that might be on the back burner and allow that conversation to take place. And much more often than not, there is something that could be worked on and could really leverage that group. And that's that first in with the company. It helps build that relationship. And then again, could be fundraising in the future, all those types of things, maybe leveraging their software. But it really is that first step to the relationship building that's important. Yeah, thanks for the question. That really starts getting me to the second part of it, which is to say, what's the order of operations that you recommend, which is, should I do my internal brainstorm, start thinking about it internally? Should I just go to your website, start the process now and work with you to start doing some of that brainstorming? What do you think is the best order of operation? Oh, that's a great question. So we do it on the fly with nonprofits all the time. So they'll start that conversation. One second, sorry. My cat. Okay, thanks. <laughs> this is after lunch, so she wants to play. But what was I saying? Yeah, so sometimes it happens on the fly in the conversation. They're intrigued by the prospect of working with a corporate volunteer or a corporate volunteer group. So just on the call, we'll take a half hour, 45 minutes and just go through that ideation process, really work out where they might need help. And part of that process is just giving examples. What are some things we've done with in the past? How have corporate groups been utilized in the past? Just to create a starting point. That's a lot of handholding for a free service. That's pretty structured. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And it's great because it's a win for both sides where corporate volunteers, they get to do something that's genuinely impactful, that really has been scoped out that actually is going to make an impact for the nonprofit. And then again, for all of you here on the nonprofit side, it's something that you really need help on. And so we try to make that process as easy as possible. So it really could be in the conversation with us, or there is the occasion when maybe there is an established corporate volunteer program at the nonprofit, or they've already thought through some ideas. They come to us, they're like, great, we just need a group of 10. Can you provide them? And then we'll provide that group. 
So yeah, both angles, I'd say more often is the case that we're working together to come up with ideas. And part of that is just the example giving and start letting those ideas percolate a little bit. Yeah. And with that being said, sometimes when I speak to a nonprofit right away, it's we need this. So it really just depends. Well, like so some people are, they're not grasping at straws. They know exactly what yeah. they're <laughs> Yeah. Which is great. Yeah, it really just depends. Like some nonprofits haven't worked with corporate volunteers before. Sometimes like brainstorming ideas is necessary, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's just very clear what they need done. Or they take some time before our meeting to speak with other departments, if it's the larger nonprofit, to see what is best suited. Great. I would love to put you on the spot and have you maybe screen share your website and just show us like, where should I go on the website if I'm a nonprofit? Like, just guide me through the, the steps. Alrighty. This is purposely.co. This is the first page you'll see. We actually have a section here for nonprofits. And here you can click get started today right away, or you can view other nonprofits we've worked with, other examples. We also have case studies at the top as well. If you're interested, let's see. You click get started today and, and it takes you right to my calendar so you could book something in there if you'd like awesome super easy yeah yeah we're getting a great question here coming from casta basically saying what's your geographic reach or is this like metro vancouver british columbia all of canada mm -hmm. the u.s what's the area you're currently serving yeah that's a really great question so we are vancouver based but because a lot of the companies we work with have employees all over Canada, internationally, Melbourne, London, Dublin, we're all over Canada. So we can pretty much accommodate any city if they have employees there, if there's a need for it there. Yeah, we're all over. I've got another question coming in here from actually Sean, who's with the PM volunteers, the Project Management volunteers, who are actually a spectacular organization who will basically sit down with your organization and pair you with a, a project manager who will help you take a large project through to completion, often over a course of a couple of months. And his question is, I think, the thing that many people have sometimes encountered, which is to say, I've got this amazing free service and I've enjoyed it. Let me tell you, it is amazing, but sometimes it can be really hard for people to, to engage with you. And I'm wondering if some of your thoughts around like maybe what some of those challenges sometimes can be seen as, and, and maybe some of the ways to, to get over those hurdles. If you want to try and tackle that, that'd be great. Otherwise I will go off with both my own strong opinions. So go for it. Yeah, I can jump in and then Elon, I'm actually curious what would you have to say as well, but first off, Sean, I do love PMB. I cannot remember. I, 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 oh, oh, get, get ton of, ton of, oh my God. Derek, would you mind? Yep. Might be your mic there. Okay. Yep. I think that's all good. Cool. Thanks so much. Yeah. PMB is great. And we've run into this too. So I think part of it is, at least from our perspective, and I'm not sure with PMB necessarily, is it's more of a, I think there's an educational piece there. Again, there's this demographic of volunteers that, that most organizations are typically used to getting. And so I think often it's not at least in our case, forefront on their mind in terms of getting those corporate volunteers or getting that other demographic to help out. And so often there's maybe not, or at least the, the thought isn't that there's a need. And that's where all that ideation process comes in and really those conversations to figure out what are the things that are, are necessary to get done? What are, what are going to be some impactful projects? But I think it's often just not in that kind of purview or on their radar. And so part of our job is just building networks, building those connections, building those relationships to really engage in that first step of the conversation. But I think it's sometimes difficult to get to that first step of the conversation because um, often they're not necessarily looking for that help because uh, they don't know they need that help quite yet. We run into that all the, I'll give a good example here, the Elizabeth Fry Society. We helped them build a toy shop for kids and we just cold, we reached out cold. We're like, hey, here's what we do. Do you happen to need volunteers? And they're like, no, I don't think so. I don't think we need corporate group. And I was like, okay, anything that you're working on right now? And they were like, yeah, we're building this toy shop. It's going to take about three weeks. There's two of our staff. And I was like, we could bring people during the workday to, to help out. And they were like, really? Like during working hours, they'll come and do this first. And I was like, yep, but they're happy to. Brought 30 people. They did it in an afternoon, saved them weeks of work. So again, it wasn't on the forefront of their mind to say, hey, let's reach out. They didn't already have those relationships. So it seems like a hurdle. 
And so even, and I think part of it is just maybe a lack of awareness about the types of services that are, are out there, whether it is project management volunteers, whether it is companies like us, I think often maybe one of the only avenues that might be seen are volunteer boards like Volunteer Connector or Volunteer Match as maybe those ways to get those volunteers. But there are services like yours and yours is wonderful. Like you do really good work. Some of it just, maybe it's like the awareness or the marketing or, or, or something like that to get it out there. Cause that can often be difficult. And I know we run into that as well. I don't know if that quite answers the question. Maybe, hopefully a little bit. Uh, but Eli, I'm really curious what you have to say as well. I think the first thing I would say is like, People inside organizations are afraid to work with volunteers because it means more work. They're like, oh, I already had my work plan. And they're like, there's this new thing, which is a great idea. But I've got a thousand great ideas. So I think that's part of it. The other part of that is everyone who's worked in a nonprofit has been burned by a bad volunteer experience. A volunteer ghosted them. A volunteer didn't fit well. The volunteer took way too much time to manage because basically it was the first time you're doing a thing. The volunteer didn't know what they were doing. And you, as a manager, didn't know how to provide clear instructions because it was the first time for you as well. So that to me is often what I see with just nonprofit staff are usually, like most of us in the world, not good at volunteer management because it's just not a thing they do. They don't have skills around that. Which is why I'm really excited about organizations like Purposely that provide a bit of a framework to say, okay, this is how we're going to manage this relationship. Like these are the parameters because otherwise it just end up in, in sadness. Because the other part I see is volunteer organizations design bad volunteer opportunities. They're often just too brittle. They're not designed with inherent flexibility. They're not designed with the fact that, yes, 20% of the people may just not show up not but if you design for that you can be okay with it but those are to me the challenges i see and then the last one is just it's time a volunteer shows up and they're like i'm ready to go now and you're like that's awesome <laughs> but i'm ready to go in three months so it's just finding the alignment of that so i often find like that for most organizations they, I would encourage them to really own their volunteer experience to say, these are the four, three core experiences that we need consistently often that we can build into almost like a product that are really designed, repeatable thing, but don't try and recruit for those one offs on your own website. Cause it's, it's too hard. I actually think working with partner, like purposely makes way more sense for the big one offs that your organization doesn't do all the time. Because you're just never going to be good at it if you don't do it regularly. Because because the Sabbath thing in volunteer land is someone who's amazing shows up and says, I want to do all these cool things. And you're like, that's awesome. But we don't do those with as an organization. And so you can either spend all your time trying to invent something that fits that volunteer, a bad idea, don't do it. Or send them away and say, I'm so sorry. There's other great organizations out there in the world. And you should talk with their friends out there. Um, but that's where I see it at. But I would have to say, sometimes these organizations set up programs with like consistency and follow through. And that's like PM Volunteers is a perfect example of an organization that has a really set process. Has a project manager just so good at it to really guide you through, here's how we're going to get this project done because their magic is they don't do the work. So smart. They are, they're there to guide you in management and best practices. I have a question for Kree and Eric. Do you get to work on IT projects? For example, a newly founded nonprofit organization, they want to build their website. Yeah, definitely things like that. I will say with corporate volunteers, it, it does depend. So if it is a small group, um, they often have a limited, like a set number of hours that they can volunteer during company time over the year. So it could be eight hours. They could split that how they want. So it could do four hours one day, four hours another day. Oftentimes we'll see 16 or two, three days that they can volunteer. So if the project is too large, it might fall outside of that scope. That's okay. Some volunteers will just continue to volunteer even outside of the, the corporate setting. But often we'll try to encourage nonprofits to, to find that fit that can work within the hour restrictions that the companies do have. Um, it's always a minimum of eight hours and then it goes up from there. And then, yeah, whether it is website development. So obviously there's a ton of 
super talented people, developers and all that, that work for these companies. We are doing one that's more theoretical um, with Access Pro Bono. So we're mapping out, they have four databases. They need them to speak to each other and do all this. So we're bringing a group to brainstorm how they might be able to do that. What are their next steps? All that kind of stuff. So we can do it at any phase where it's that brainstorming phase, figuring out the whole plan, like PMV, right? Figuring out that project plan, the scope of it, when your next steps, and then people to implement as well. So yeah, for sure. Could really be anything. Great question. Yeah, and PMV does IT project. Yeah, totally. Yeah, no, they're a great fit. It actually would be a really good fit for doing the, oh, and here's a part of the work that needs a big group one day part with that. Maybe we're going to need to caption all the photos or some element within the whole project. But my alarm now says we've hit our hour. So first, I want to thank our three guest experts today who've come in and shared their knowledge. I'm really grateful for that.